London, home to a world of shopping and 23-year-old actor Ahmet Ahmet. As a performer, Ahmet believes that appearance is everything. I quite like to take the time to indulge in looking fabulous. That could be quite fun, couldn't it? Put a shirt on and that over the top. That'd be quite nice. <laughs> the fact that I'm an actor requires me to have a, a, an extravagant taste, to have these expensive beauty products. Look at that. It's Splendid. fantastic, isn't it? I'll have one, please. I like eating out. <laughs> I don't like pub meal, pub grub, ugh, you know. That's not bad. Or a glass of wine and a dinner. Yeah, I suppose for London it's all right. Oh, no, I think that's In Wales, easy. you could buy two houses for that. <laughs> My life is about friends. It's about looking good. It's about feeling good. Image and networking are useful tools for an actor looking for his next role, but Ahmet's indulgences have landed him almost £13,000 in the red. And with an income of just over 14 and a half grand last year, it's threatening his future. I really want to be a successful actor, and if I carry on like this, I'm going to have to give up and get a good job that pays in order to pay it off. So I need to find a way of surviving. Actor Ahmet Ahmet blames his debt on his profession. The inconsistency of his work is reflected in his bank balance. So when he's resting from his big love, life on the stage, Ahmet's earning a crust as a part-time beauty consultant, which has given him a passion for pampering and a love of looking good. If Ahmet wants to see his name in lights, it's time to call in the experts. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry will try to unearth the root of his overspending. The reason you're going out and about is to alleviate the fear, the anxiety that's present when you're not working. Mm -hmm. I'm completely petrified of giving up something that I, I love so much. While lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has her own dramas to deal with. I thought that Armit would be quite positive about exploring ways to cut down on his spending, but I was wrong. That's not even £10 a day. It's just not doable. It really is not doable. Ahmet lives in Honour Oak, South East London. While he's at work, Jay and Benjamin are about to search the home he shares with actor friend Stevie for signs of Ahmet's super spending. I think oh. it's in here, Jay. Oh, yeah, look, the posters. Look at this. Calamity Jane. Oh, look at this. This is about him. I must single out Ahmed Ahmed. This young actor possesses a rare charisma, a sort of magical projection that excites and enthralls his audience. And his body language is superb. So I hope he has a long and successful career on the British stage. Wow. That's nice. Jay and Benjamin have had a glimpse of Ahmed's life on the stage. Now they want to see where an actor actually spends his £14,000 income. 75 quid. Never been worn. Never been worn, still with the label on. Mm. So I'd say there's a fair bit going. Yeah in the shops. What's in there? This is interesting. This is in a Middle Eastern talisman. I wonder if there's some cultural issues with him. We'll have to find That's out more his about family that. there, isn't it? Right at the head of the bed. Very much uh, focus on the family. A book about dreams and then a bottle of Moet and Chandon, which shows the champagne lifestyle he aspires to. Ahmet's bathroom cabinet hides even more of his indulgences. Oh, look. What's you got? Loads of skin brightening. Is that for men? Yeah, men and women, rejuvenating treatment. <gasps> I know what that is. That is over £200 worth. What does it do? That is serious concentrate. I mean, what you mm. do is put it round your eyes and on wrinkles, and lots of people and celebrities absolutely swear by it, but yeah. it is one of the most expensive products on the market. Wow. Don't drop it. I'm nervous with you touching I'm it. Nervous now. touching I'm it myself. Well, I hope when we actually meet him, he does look amazing, because he's spending an awful lot of effort. That is a lot of money to be spending on face products. Back in the bedroom, Jay's just found proof of exactly where most of Ahmet's money is going. Clothes. Beauty products. Theatre. Dinner. Ooh, nice cocktails. Dress circle, first floor restaurant. Ooh. 
Clothes, clothes. Boots, big one on boots. Jay, look, this is more your cup of tea, isn't it? Rather oh, than a nice bag file. Full of rubbish. Nice neat file. Oh, look, what have we got here? Oh. Nat West. Oh dear. Spotted. Tried to contact you recently but been unsuccessful. There have been no credits. Blah, blah, blah. That is never a good Ooh, moment. Within when you go the next that. seven days. I reckon we should take these. Let's see if we can get this guy on the road to recovery. No, I don't think I'm a terrible spender. I think I, all my spending is completely necessary, really. I still swear by that statement. <laughs> As Benjamin and Jay will soon discover, Ahmet's overspending began at the age of 17 when he left his childhood home in Essex and his Turkish Cypriot parents. My parents love me dearly, but my dad is very worried about me. I was always the very typical Cypriot boy until one day I said, I've got to get out if there's something else out there for me. The day that I came home and said to my parents, I'm becoming an actor, was the day that they lost this Cypriot son. Ahmet abandoned both his culture and family security when he followed his dream, performing in musicals, to the bright lights of London. Leaving drama school three years ago marked the onset of Ahmet's money problems. Financial help from his parents stopped, but his spending didn't. And since graduating, he spent almost a year in total off the stage. Ahmet now has to live on £250 a week. That's half of what he earned in his last acting job six months ago, and he's beginning to feel the pinch. Inside, I'm like, oh, God, I'm struggling away. But out on the outside, it's, it's all, all fine, and I'm an actor, and it's all fine, and I'm earning money, and, you know, I'm in the business, and, you know, it's this whole pretending to, 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 you know, to stay on top of it all, really. But it's hard to stay on top of it because Ahmet's lifestyle comes at a price. He can have three auditions a week, which means days off work, lost wages, and no guarantees he'll get the part. As an actor, you've, you've usually got to be kind of well-budgeted um, because you never know when your next job's coming. But Ahmet doesn't seem to worry about that. He just ploughs on through. Because I have no control over my career, I feel addicted to controlling my, my appearance. After an audition, I go and buy myself a shirt because that way I can control something, a colour or a, or a look, you know. This is a wonderful colour for my eyes. It helps me get through my life. <laughs> Ahmet's extravagant lifestyle means that paying out for the necessities is a struggle, like the £400 a month rent he pays Stevie. We look around girl shops, not boy shops. <laughs> All right, then. You know, I keep telling him, you're going to get yourself into more and more debt if you keep living like this, and, you know... But he likes living the high life, so... <laughs> Ahmet still living the champagne lifestyle and with his total debt nearly equaling his annual salary, it's getting harder to ignore one hefty loan, two overdrafts and three maxed out credit cards. This black cloud that, that, that does follow me around, I know it's there, I, 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 I choose to ignore it. Um, without it there would be a much happier life, I think, it would be heaven. <laughs> Jay and Benjamin's sweep of Ahmet's home has revealed excess spending in two key areas. They've invited him to the heart of London's theatre land, hoping to give his money madness the final curtain. Oh, hi, Ahmet. Nice to meet you. I'm Jay. This is Benjamin. Hello, Ahmet. Very nice to meet you. We asked you to meet us here because we thought you'd be comfortable in a theatre. We've got a yeah. couple of things we'd like to show you inside. We've got some nice us? surprises for you in here. Okay. Come, Come on. on in. Come this way. Come this way. Come with us. Jay's prepared a little something for you, a little something <laughs> she made earlier. Yeah, it's OK, you can walk forward, I promise you. We're not going to push you over. Now, stand there, OK? And now open your eyes wow. and have a look at your audience of mannequins. What do you think they could represent? An audience? <laughs> but they've got face masks on and baseball oh, oh, yes. caps oh, yes. and cucumbers. Yes. And what they are representing is actually how much money that you've spent in the past year on your image. For the first time ever, Ahmet staring his debt in the face and is overwhelmed by the 320 heads staring back at him. Each one of these heads mm -hmm. represents £10 that you've spent on clothes, beauty mm. products, all your lotions and potions. And that has added up to £3,200 in the last 12 months. What do you think? 
when you look at your audience of mannequins? It's a lot, isn't it, really? Yes, I didn't think it was that much. Well, if you think that's bad... I've got a little something for you downstairs that might give you even more of a shock. You ready? Come this way. Go on. <laughs> Come on. Down we go. So, Armour, are you a bit confused about why you're sitting in the stalls of a theatre with a <laughs> linen tablecloth in front of you? I never thought I'd do that, yeah. What do you think this is going to be about? Hmm. Maybe a restaurant, maybe. Sort of a white cloth. Well, Shall we find out? Let's. OK. Waiter! Ooh. What we have here to represent your expenditure annually on eating out, <laughs> drinking out, taking out. This is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Any more? Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, hamburgers. Are they real? <laughs> it's all real. It's not just the mountain of food and the rivers of alcohol that you're consuming. It's also costing you a great deal of money. Would you like me to get the bill? Yeah, but food is an essential, isn't it, really? Not necessarily in the West End of London. Can we have the bill, please? How much do you reckon it is? Oh, £100. <laughs> yeah, probably £100 a year, you think? No. OK, Armit. You spend £9,480 per annum on eating and drinking out. No. Yes. It's not unusual for Ahmet to eat out for breakfast, lunch and dinner at a cost of almost £30 a day. You see, basic, basic food and drink needs can be taken care of more cheaply than that. Do you think that's a lot? Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's it not, is, isn't it? I can't justify that, really. If you ate in for a year, or more cheaply, or with friends, <laughs> you'd be out of debt. I think Armit was really shocked and really surprised today, actually, because I think it's no surprise to him that he's an overspender, but it has been a real surprise where he spends his money. There was a moment, to be honest, where I thought he might just burst into tears sat at the dinner table. And I think when you see a strong emotional reaction to basically what was simply a financial reality, it does show that perhaps there's stuff there that needs to be explored deeper. I do want to reflect on it. I, I, I want to. It's not a horrible thing. I don't want to usually want to block it out. I think I'm maybe ready to take it all in and, and think about it at least. So um I won't be going to the pub tonight. <laughs> With no more nights out on the town, Ahmet's going to have to get used to nights in. Jay and Benjamin have come to Ahmet's home in South East London to help him exercise the art of self-control over his dwindling funds. So, Ahmet, how much do you think you get through on an average week on non-essential items? Um, about £100. We've been through your statements, and on an average week, you get through £280. And that is what it looks like in cash. That's not possible, is it? Not on your income, but you do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's an art to that, really. <laughs> what we'd like you to do is experience cold turkey for the next seven days. So we would like to negotiate with you about how much you think would be the minimum amount of money you could live on for one week only. The point of this is to strip down your life so you notice what it is that you really miss spending money on and what it is that you really don't mind living without. Fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, can't believe my luck. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think would be the minimum amount you could survive on? That's a really horrible question. Mm. Um, well, should we halve that? That would be quite fun, wouldn't it? What about if we halved what you thought you were spending? Oh, that's impossible, isn't it? Do you no. think you could survive <laughs> no, but, on 50 quid? No, why not? It's, it's absolutely not, impossible. It's not for your rent, it's not for your bills, it's just for this stuff This is just you... money in your pocket to get through seven days? No, because that's one meal out already. Well, well you wouldn't be going out. And so that's lunches. Maybe. And then that's just, you know... Maybe that's what we're talking about, <laughs> you learning about, that meals can be taken in a different way other than down at the Ritz. You look a bit worried. What are you worried about missing out on? My friends are really important to me, so mm. on that budget I won't be able to see them as much. Do you reckon you would be happy to give it a go on 50 quid? That's not even £10 a day. That's right. It's just not doable. It really is not doable. Given that that's how you think, 
you know, it is really quite brave of you. So there you go. That is it for the next seven days. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> It's the first night of cold turkey, and Ahmet's collecting a takeaway, courtesy of flatmate Stevie. I'm sure you've only got 50 pounds to spend in the next week. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> but Ahmet's agreed to try, so he's already thinking ahead to tomorrow. There we are. We've got some a whole meal for lunch. It's the first full day of cold turkey week, and with lunch sorted, Ahmet still has to battle with his other big addiction, shopping. Not easy working in London's Covent Garden with temptation all around. I think the thing is, is that with working in the day at Origins, and sometimes when it's not busy, it can be quite a boring day. But then you have these tea breaks, you see, and I think those 20 minute breaks, you're sort of tempted to go and spend some money because it will kill a bit of time. But I just went browsing in shops instead. Window shopping is a bit boring, isn't it? I would much rather go in, but you can't, so... Next best thing is to window shop, I suppose. <laughs> Ahmet's finished work and leaves the lure of the West End behind him with his £50 still intact. He's fast discovering that staying in is the new going out. I'm feeling a bit down. I can't afford to go out and see my friends. They're the only people that really understand me, really, and I love them so much, I just, you know... wish I could meet with them and have dinner and drinks, and that just all costs so much, and I'm on the cold turkey, I just, I just can't afford it. After three nights home alone, Ahmet's looking forward to some company. He's spending his lunch break with his friend and fellow actor, Cameron. Hey, Cameron. Hey. <laughs> I met Ahmet um, about three years ago, and we were working together on a job. And I actually never knew he was that bad with money. I didn't realise he was that bad. But um, he always looks great, so I'm always a bit suspicious. Maybe he's been shopping again. You've got 5p left. What's your budget? Five pounds? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's 3.85. It's fine, isn't it? Well, what, 3.85 is not a lot for a lunch, is it? Or eating, 3.85, yeah. I'll get this, anyway. I'll get tap water. Ahmet's barely touched his £50, and he's just been offered a free lunch. I think he's quite proud. He doesn't like to be seen as to be struggling. Let's go, Hart. You sure? Yeah, because I can do one lunch, and then I'll do packed lunch tomorrow. <laughs> New, isn't it? Yeah. It's not necessary, is it? <laughs> 60 quid, babe. <laughs> there you go, that's your food for a week. No, but that was before the cold turkey. I'm thinking I'm doing really well, actually. Yeah. Probably. But in an ideal world, I think it's a bit, a bit, a bit harsh. harsh. A bit harsh in the ideal world. Probably double it, I think that's more realistic. Yeah. You can't live like that all the time, can you? Well, so, you have to try. But they've been a bit of a big spend because it's been £5.10. <laughs> Ahmet splashed out today, but there's a bigger test still to come. Tomorrow is tough. What do I do? Far Pavilion's premiere. Very special friend Dean has an opening night. Do I just break the rules? Because it's not every day you have an opening night, is it? Ahmet knows tonight's premiere will be a glamorous affair, awash with temptation. But he decides to take the risk. Ticket's free, luckily. So that's saved me about 20 quid. I'm taking all the money with me. And uh, I shan't be spending it all, but I thought it'd be good exercise for me to have all the money in my pocket and not use it all. <laughs> and I'm um, hoping that everyone will be buying me drinks. After show party, Ahmet tracks down his good friend Dean. They met last year when they appeared on stage together. Well done. Well done, you. Yeah. Aww. Did you enjoy it then? I did, it was good, yeah. It was really, really good. Oh. You really get a whole wonderful night. 
Dean Dean was brilliant. Um, he's busy at the moment, though. He's talking to everyone, so I quickly collared him for a second just to say well done. But no doubt we'll have a long, intense chat about his characterisation. We've got a few tips for him. <laughs> bought me a glass of wine at the bar and uh, this is a lovely free glass of champagne so so far no uh, no penny spent so far today <laughs> Ahmet's tucking into the free buffet but the free drinks run dry so he splashed out on a glass of wine <laughs> it's the end of a long night and Ahmet's managed to resist jumping into a taxi to take him home and instead hops on the night bus While Ahmet's in the throes of his cold turkey week, Benjamin wants to find out why the socialising that has pushed Ahmet almost £13,000 into debt is so important to him. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I get the impression that a lot of your financial issues mm -hmm. come from the money you spend to go out. Yeah, there's a lot of friends to, that you make every show you do. And, but be, being with those friends is a way of staying in touch with, with the business and... and feeling like you're still part of it, because when you're not performing, it's very easy to feel that you're no longer in the business. The reason you're going out and about is to alleviate a fear, the anxiety that's present when you're not working. Mm -hmm. It makes me extremely unhappy when I'm not working. Your greatest fear, in a sense, must be, therefore, that you may never get another part. Yes, you're absolutely right. If this was to carry on, if it, you know, three years down the line, if I still haven't got a part, I would have to give up. I would have yeah. to do something else fear of that. I'm completely petrified of giving up something that I, I love so much. What's going on behind You Never Perform Again that's so terrifying and catastrophic? Life would be a failure. Your whole life would be a failure. Yeah. I failed. And when did you... How did you get that sense that your whole life would be a failure? The answer stems back to when Ahmet left home, age 17. No Cypriot boy leaves home at 17 to pursue his career. Right. It just doesn't happen. My parents were not very happy... Well, my father wasn't very happy about me pursuing an acting career. He said, how much are you going to earn? Where are you going to work? And how much are you going to earn? He said, I don't know. And this was, you know, absolute heartache for my father. He said, if you leave, you leave and you never come back. He didn't mean it literally a week later, he changed his mind, literally. Mm -hmm. He was trying to, to scare, scare me off. so I wouldn't do it. What were people doing around your community that was getting them praise? Um, becoming bank managers. Right. Owning a shop, their own business, becoming businessmen. That was a really big decision to make. I felt like I gave up my... my, um, my, my family, I suppose. I feel selfish. For, for, for choosing to become an actor, to, to leave them and, and to pursue a, a secret dream of mine since I was a child that I never told anyone about. Really? And, you know, and then I feel a, a little angry why, why, why I'm made to feel selfish. Why is that selfish when you look at all my other friends and they're completely not feeling guilty at all? Are there any examples from kind of your community of people who have gone off and done things a different way, for example, but who are accepted? Not that I can think of. No? No. I've always had this thing that the two worlds just don't mix. Yeah. Well, the old Arm at the sun and arm at the actor just don't mix. Right. I'm wondering... If there's anything you think that we can do to work on getting you more comfortable with the choices you've made and finding, you know, maybe even some middle ground. I want to go back to being, being a little boy again. I want to reverse it all back and, mm. and talk about what it, what it was like to be, to be at home. You want to get back in the bosom of the family. Mm. Ahmet seemed visibly upset at what he seemed to perceive as the loss of his family. 
He's created for himself perhaps a surrogate family with his acting community and the friends that he sees there. And it does seem that he relies on them very heavily for emotional security. This could explain why he's so keen to go out and to spend so much time with them and why that's costing him so much money. Ultimately, for Ahmet, what he really needs to do is bring back together these two worlds that he lives in so that Ahmet the son and Ahmet the actor can live a bit more side by side. He can have a bit more internal security, which will stop him needing to spend money to create some kind of sense of being accepted by other people. Ahmet's beginning to realise that his troubled relationship with his parents may have something to do with his out-of-control spending. As cold turkey week draws to a close, he's still going strong. And despite sitting in his favourite cafe, he's resisted his usual big breakfast. If I came in here normally, I'd spend about 60, 67 pounds um, on a nice breakfast, maybe an omelette, or a nice continental breakfast or something. Nothing. <laughs> I skip breakfast. I've had a coffee there, and a biscuit. That's it's going to be wonderful for my weight, I tell you. I've got to chuck it off. <laughs> this cold turkey has definitely affected the way I think about money. And it's been fine, actually. I've quite enjoyed the challenge. I mean, I haven't really craved anything yet, is the point. I don't know what's going to happen when I really want something and I, and I can't buy it, I suppose. Ahmet believes spending on his appearance and socialising with friends is an essential part of being an actor. But after seeing the truth laid out before him, he's been shocked into living on a paltry £50 a week. With the generosity of his close circle of friends, Ahmet survived it. But he can't always rely on hospitality. <laughs> Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has come to see how Ahmet's doing and to set a realistic long-term budget. Tell me how you got on your cold turkey week. Fantastic. Have you? Yeah, you'd really be happy. I actually got, I had five pounds left. No way. It. I so did, yeah. Seriously? I did. I don't know how I did Because <laughs> <laughs> you Quite really exciting. thought you weren't going to be able to do that no. at all. Well, but my reaction was a bit silly, really. I'm a bit disappointed with my reaction, because once I really thought about it, I thought, that's not too bad, is it, really? Not too bad for one week. But Jay wants to introduce the concept of budgeting for life. She wants Ahmet to cut down in all areas of his spending. When we come down to clothing, there's just going to be just £100 a month yeah. on clothes. Okay. That might really hit you hard. Cos I, I, I made a, a very bold decision. <laughs> and I said, um, until I get another acting job, I'm never buying another item of clothing. Oh, did you? <laughs> and then you wave it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that at all. But I said it sounded nice when I said it. Now, health and beauty is another area that probably won't surprise you that came up, although yeah. there are enough products, really, in this house. To last me Let's be honest. <laughs> rations. <laughs> to last you quite a long time. Emergency rations. You've been spending £50, and we'd like to cut that back to £25. So you feel sort of that none of those figures are sort of scaring you. It's about finding a balance, I yeah. think. There's no point in setting an unrealistic budget that you yeah. think, I can just about cope with that for a week. Because yeah. this is a long-term plan so yeah. that you can get yourself sorted. Jay wants to tackle Ahmet's biggest problem first, the £9,480 he spent in the last year on eating and drinking out. She's going to show him how to dine out cheaply. Strangely enough, the first stop's the off-licence. So, Ahmet, why do you think I might have brought you here? There's been lots and lots of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, you do. That is definitely true. Now, I wonder whether you'd ever heard of a BYO restaurant. No. No? B-Y-O, bring your own. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought what we might do is go tonight, give it a go. You're in charge of choosing the drink that we're going to take with us, OK? Oh, OK. Because one, th so <laughs> well, one of the... Well, one of the ways that you are effectively wasting quite a lot of your money is mm. buying wine in restaurants where the yeah. markup is absolutely huge. I like this one. This is one of my... Oh, is that one of your favourites? Yeah, I've enjoyed many a bottle of Ah! Oh. I mean, the thing is, if you do want to take that bottle of rosé, it's fine, because it's buy two and get a third free. It's yeah. just anything on special offer. Get a bottle of white and a bottle of red, and then we can have that on the way home. Oh, marvellous <laughs> idea, Ahmet! Just these three, Hello, please. Ahmet's bought three bottles of wine for just under £12. <laughs> Here we are, 
in here, Armit. Bring the wine. So, Armit, I didn't think you'd want to spend the whole evening with me droning on about my budget. <laughs> so, look who I bought. Helen's leg, sure. <laughs> Oh, that's cheered me up. <laughs> that's that's cheered me up. Okay. <laughs> Ahmet hasn't seen his friend and fellow actor Alan since before he started his retail therapy. So, Alan, have you ever been to one of these bring your own restaurants before? No. Have you heard um, about them? Heard of them? I've been mean, close to a couple of them, but I've never been. Nothing against yeah. them. Just never, <laughs> just never been. Just in. never tried them. Just cheers cheers to your first beef. <laughs> to your oh, sorry, of course. Sorry, yeah. to Armit. To Armit. To your first BYO experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, mine too. Oh. Mm. I think Armit's going to be a bit of a fan of the BYO. I think it helped that he was really pleased to see Alan. Socialising and eating out and catching up with his friends is a really, really important part of his social life. So if it means this is the way he does it, I think he'd find it easier to do that than he would be able to say to people, actually, I'm broke and I'm not going out at all. So it's a really good halfway house for him. Things seem to be moving in the right direction for Ahmet, and he could be one step closer to his dream. His agent has called with the news that he's got an audition for Starlight Express. Although it's going to cost him £60 in lost wages, Ahmet's taken the day off work to visit his old drama college to get some singing practice. The hardest to find in yourself. What is Benjamin's come along to watch. Seems to determine I'm destined for life on the shelf. This way to beat character, waiting to find Whatever it is that I lack Whenever they ask the real me to step forward The real me takes a step back Not only has he got a really good voice, he can act. Yeah. Which, which makes a, a difference between a performance and, and a very good performance. Do you know what I mean? Where do you get your emotional inspiration from when you do something sad like that? There are some places that I, yeah. that I tap into, yeah. Can I share <laughs> it's getting worse as I get older. <laughs> Life seems to get worse. <laughs> you can really communicate your own emotions and really mm -hmm. put that across, and that's what makes a star, I guess. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? You can play with your food before you eat it. You can chibi your chow before you chew. You can play with your food, you can't beat it. So, ducky, let me play with you. You can play with your food before you bite it. You can toy with your tuck before you crunch. You can play with your food while I fight it. It's a crazy little game called... Lunch! That's good. It's really good. Thank you. You obviously really enjoy doing that. You seem really lost in the moment. Mm. Absolutely, he'll love it. Yeah? Mm. Um, how much of your time do you spend these days, now that you've finished drama school, working on your skills and working towards finding jobs? It's just so difficult because the job I have doesn't allow me the, the, the time to have it, you know... Ideally, it would be nice to have days free so I can go to the actor Centre or mm. keep doing singing lessons, because that also keeps me happy as well when I keep doing a singing lesson or go yeah. to a dance class. You seem very happy today mm. when you're doing that. So if the job you have isn't letting you do what makes you happy and what is your chosen profession, mm. then would that be a good reason to reevaluate the job you do? <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> it kind of makes sense, yeah. yeah. I think, obviously, financially, it's very important that you get on top of your bills. But it's also important to put that within the framework of what your true goals are in life. And also, who your true self is, what really makes you happy. Ahmet is on his way to his audition for Starlight Express. I have to dance first. And, um, and then the people that they like the look of, I guess, will um, be asked to stay and sing. She's quite 
hard when you work on your song and then they don't actually ask to hear it and you're like, you haven't even heard me sing. <laughs> if I get offered this job, it's going to be a year's contract and it just means a whole year of earning fantastic money doing what I want to do. It would be great news for Ahmed's debt if he landed a role on a West End stage. His current weekly wage of £250 could be tripled. You can imagine with what's going on emotionally with my family and with just the way my life is, I spend a lot of time feeling anxious for, for, for no apparent reason. I, I'm nervous. So what always happens is that when I get a job, everything just goes bleh and it all just falls into place and suddenly I feel like I can breathe. Shira and Adam Murray. Hello. 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 How are you? How are you doing? Well, I'm all right. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> you all right? What you are you in for? Starlight. 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 Yeah, Starlight. Starlight. No, you're having coffee, yanging around. <laughs> <laughs> She's hanging around. What time are you in, in then? 1.30. I'm going to go and get changed. Get warmed up. Yeah. Ahmet wants to be one hundred percent focused on his music. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's been over a week now since I did my uh, Starlight Express audition. Well over a week. And I haven't um, heard anything. My, uh, I've got a couple of friends that have been to some recalls since and been called back and back and back and uh, I've still heard nothing. So looks like it's a no. What can you do? Just got to keep carrying on. Ahmet's called home with the bad news about his audition. It's not unusual for talks with his parents about money to end in an argument. After the conversation, Ahmet's mood plummets further. I've just come back from a very long phone call with my parents. <sighs> and um, it all kicked off, basically. They want me to move back home and stop being a performer. <sighs> and I can't do that. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to perform. So, I guess... My parents are never going to be proud. Ahmet is struggling with his relationship with his family. Benjamin hopes he may have a solution to mend the growing rift. I think Ahmet is really missing the sense of connection with his family and with his culture. He feels he had to leave that behind to pursue his dream of becoming an actor. And now the two live for him really in different worlds. I want him to try to be able to reintegrate these two parts of his life. I'm going to ask him to go and see a woman called Aishan, who's a Turkish Cypriot who runs a theatre group. And he can see that out there in the real world, there are places where these two things can live side by side. Hopefully that will help him to integrate some of these aspects within himself. Because I do believe the tension at the moment of keeping them apart is something that's making him spend money. If I can help him to reunite them, there should be less pressure on him to spend money. Ahmet's on his way to meet Aishan Sadat Jamal in Edmonton, one of North London's largest Turkish Cypriot communities. It's here that the Happy Moon Theatre Company performs their fusion of Turkish culture and the arts. I went to Sylvia Young Theatre School. I don't know if you've heard of yeah, them, and they're quite yeah, well known. Yeah. I think I was about the only Turkish Cypriot there, and I think that's partly the reason why I set up this company, to try and form mm. links with other Turkish Cypriots and other Turkish yeah. people. It's so surprising for me. I've never... Um, I've never met anyone who's Turkish Cypriot that's actually in mm. the business at all, especially in musical theatre, which is what mm. I specialise in. Yeah. I've never seen anyone or heard of anyone, so I've always felt like I was completely alone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Not alone, but yeah. just complete, mm. it's always on the outside of things and always Looking different. In. That's yeah. right, that's right. That's exactly how I felt as well. I mean, um, it's surprising that when I did form links due to the theatre company, I found out that we've got a, a variety of talented people out there. Mm. I just yeah. find it so interesting because, you know, I had to sacrifice being a Turkish Cypriot mm. to become an actor. That's what I had to do. I think I've disappointed my parents so much mm. and I've achieved so much, yet for them it's just... It's never been quite as good enough. I think if I was to have become a doctor or a lawyer or all these things, it would have been amazing for them. I've never really had that from my immediate family and I really do sympathise with you in that sense. And there's great appreciation within the community for the arts. I mean, we recently did a performance here and it was packed out and, you know, it was very multicultural, but at the same time there was a lot of Turkish people here as well. They do appreciate the arts. I've performed unnervously hmm. in front of a of <laughs> thousand, two thousand seater yeah. before. Um, I've, like on the, at the Shaftesbury Theatre, I've mm. performed, and but the thought of standing here on, 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 on a 300-seater theatre like this in front of Turkish Cypriots yeah. would would make me absolutely. I would be so nervous. I think it'd be a fantastic experience for you, though. And I, I think it'd be I would fantastic be really nervous, for though. you to be introduced to our community because you'll be an inspiration. Because I've for hid them. for so long. Yeah, well, I've hid. Well, maybe that's. I've gone so mainstream yeah. and gone yeah. so into the West End that it almost mm. hid that it's, it's always been funny mm. to, to stand but here. But I think and... you need to bring the Western to us and bring us <laughs> along with you, you know? I'd be absolutely interested in getting involved with um, Aishen's theatre company. Um, it sounds really exciting. I mean, it's something I never thought I'd ever dream of doing. I mean, performing to a Turkey Cypriot audience is completely surreal. Very exciting to get back into my culture and... Maybe, maybe it'll give me the, the feeling of, of unity that I've wanted for so long, rather than the feeling of, of, of rejection. 
maybe they're not as disappointed as what I think they are. Maybe I'm convinced they're disappointed. Maybe they're just afraid. Maybe they don't understand. I think maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe. After meeting Aishan, Ahmet is beginning to feel less isolated from his family. He's also realised that socialising doesn't have to happen in the West End. He's invited his friends over to give Jay's homemade beauty products a go. I'm going to sit here, so everyone take a seat. So first of all, we're going to start with the cucumber refreshing gel. Um, pound. So I have to pound the gel yeah, with, the, with the cucumber in a pestle and mortal. <laughs> what is that? A mortar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even have a little job. While the eye gel's cooling, the party moves on to an egg-based face pack. I know how to do the egg white. Do the egg whites. I'm intrigued to, to, to see whether he can do it. <laughs> Go on, Armit. Good boy. I've never seen it done like that. I haven't either. <laughs> like oh no, oh no. <laughs> Should we do that again? <laughs> Let's try one <laughs> Despite their unorthodox methods, they've managed to make an eye gel, a face pack, and have potato slices to debag their eyes. Perfect relaxation for a party of tired actors. And just go like this. Oh, it's come up lovely. Oh, oh, I'm oh really it's set. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, hello. oh that's gorgeous. It's <laughs> <laughs> got up my nose. Oh, this is gorgeous. My skin has never felt so tight. <laughs> I feel like I've had Botox or something. Oh, this is lovely. From the feeling of it, it feels just as good as the stuff that, he, uh, that he'd normally use. So it's definitely a fun way of doing it. And it's just a way of staying at home and having fun as opposed to going out. Ahmet seems to be getting his spending under control and he's taken the first steps back towards his culture and his family. Benjamin wants him to go home to Essex for a heart-to-heart -heart with his parents. But before he does, he's offering some emotional support. What do you think you've got out of this process so far that you perhaps can take back to your family? I think there is a way of me being who, exactly who I am and, and, and them accepting that. I think that I need to have faith in that more. Yeah. And, uh, and I think this, and, and seeing, uh, meeting Aisha has really made me see that, that it is possible. Yeah. The one thing I really want to ask them today, if they are proud of me, I want to know that I haven't let them down, that they, they are proud of what I've done. So do you feel confident you can do that? I am. Let's do it. I'm excited. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. So how do you feel about going to see them now? Fine, yeah. Now that we're here on the doorstep, what are you going to focus on? I think I've got to focus on um, not getting angry mm -hmm. um, at them. Do you feel a bit worried now that we're getting to the street? Yes, yeah. I am a bit now. Are you? I admit it to you. OK. Good luck. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you. See you later. Ahmet's finally going to talk to his parents about the pain he's felt since leaving home six years ago and decides to speak to them in private. So, uh, how'd it go? It was interesting, yeah. And I just thought, so, Dad, are you, are you proud of me? Are you really proud of me? And he said, yeah, yeah, of course. And I said, why? He said, because you're my little boy. And I said, sometimes when we argue, you say that I haven't achieved anything, you say that I haven't done anything, that I've wasted my life, and when am I going to start growing up? And I said, don't you think I've done, like, wonderful things for a 23-year-old? And then, obviously, he interrupts, because that's what he does, so I didn't argue back. 
Did you feel that by not arguing you were able to connect a bit more yeah. emotionally as human Definitely. beings? Definitely. For the first time we were listening to each other. We were talking like human beings mm. for the first time. How did they respond to that? He said... Which, yes, made sense. He, he just said, I'm not here to give you a hard time. You are my child. And he just, you know, he wants what's best for me. You forget so easily that that's, you know, they do have your best interest at heart. I think I found a skill and a tactic of how to deal with, with, with my parents. And yeah. no matter how different our worlds are, that we, people that we've become, we can still meet somewhere in the middle. Armour and his father managed to listen to each other. And actually, underneath that disagreement, they found their mutual connection and their love as father and son. And it's not going to be a meeting for half an hour and suddenly his life has changed, but perhaps it's the first step on a long road to repairing that relationship and allowing Armit the son and Armit the actor to once again come together and live back under one roof. Four weeks ago, 23-year-old actor Ahmet Ahmet thought nothing of dining out for breakfast, lunch and dinner to keep in touch with his thespian friends and didn't bat an eyelid at spending over £200 on one beauty product. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has shown him that he can have double the fun at a fraction of the price, while psychological coach Benjamin Fry has helped Ahmet begin to build bridges at home. And that's not the only advice Ahmet's taken on board. Benjamin, the idea that if I got an evening job, it would allow my days free to, um, to do all the things that I w would make me happy, like class, the actor centre. So I had the idea that what I'd do is cut down my origins days, so I'd do like two to three a week, and then do about three shifts at the restaurant. And that means that my days are free. I'm not having to pay any travel, it's literally across the road. And also, if I'm not working in town, I'm less likely to spend money as well. Now when Ahmet's in town, he's spending his hard-earned cash on preparing for that next audition, starting with a dance class. It's been a while, so I'm a bit worried about it, but I just need to keep in shape. I'm sure I'm a little bit stiffer than I was, and so I need to work on my flexibility, work on my dance technique. Five, six, seven, eight. So I hope when I get a dance audition, I'll feel more prepared. It's been a month since Benjamin and Jay first met Ahmet, and they're getting together for the last time. Today, it's Ahmet who's chosen the location. Benjamin and Jay are in for a surprise. It's a restaurant without prices. Hello, Hello. How are you? Very well. <laughs> nice to see you. I don't want to be contentious, but you are meant to be saving money. Yes, asking well. Asking us here. I am, What's by asking you about? here. I've heard about this place with a friend, and uh, you'll notice that there are no prices on the, uh, next to anything on the menu. You have your meal, you have anything you like, your drinks, everything, and at the end um, you sort of value your own, you know, your own meal and, and pay what you can. And you sort of work it all out and you think, OK, yeah. I don't know, 750 cool. or... OK, all right. So I'm I thought this would be on. a fantastic way to meet someone for lunch and yeah. not actually pay that much. OK, that's brilliant. How have you been getting on, though, with your sort of cutting down, going out and meals and everything? I've done really, really well. Have you? I think I have done. I'm very proud of myself. I've not bought one item of clothing since the, the beginning of this. I think I've hardly gone out for dinner. Cos you were really worried if you didn't go out, mm. you weren't going to be seeing your friends, were Definitely. you? Definitely. Yeah. But the, the point is, is that I'm just finding cheap alternatives. I'm going to people's houses, you know, and sharing a, the cost of a pizza, say, yeah. is, is working yeah. out cheaper than going out for dinner. And it makes me feel happier that I'm not spending so much money. It's kind of guilt-free. You seem like you're really much more lighter, much more relaxed than when we started this process. I think that um, you're absolutely right, because... I think for a long time I, I carried a, a burden around with me. You know, I was so afraid of asking that question directly to my father and to hear him say that, you know, he was proud of me and that I am always his little boy. 
Yeah. It's just a complete weight off my chest. And what's been the feedback since then? Have there been anything come out of that? Or? Really good feedback. They, they gave me a call today and said, when, when are you going to come and spend more time with us? You know, you always come for a couple of hours and you leave. When, when are you going to spend the whole day with us? So, so basically to, they want, they're yeah. thinking that they'd really like to so carry I'm gonna go on. and spend, spend the night there. They're going to fix the bed up for me in my old room. And so, you know, I can't you? to be long. I have to eat and I have to go to my audition. I've got an audition today. You've got an audition yeah. today? Yeah, what are you auditioning yeah. for today? Mamma Mia International <gasps> Tour. Da, da, da. Yeah. So when you're on broad, Way and Benjamin and I come and see you, and you've got your name and lights, and you're earning fifty thousand dollars a week. Will you be sensible then? I think I'll be a, a gold-plated packed lunchbox. <laughs> <or something. laughs> You'll be bringing your no. own Chateau Lafitte. So not going to be sensible then. <laughs> After a tasty lunch, Ahmet has the arduous task of deciding what to pay. He settles on ten pounds a head. Good luck, Armit. Just think dead. of all that sunshine, Cape Town, Melbourne. It's free living. <laughs> Wish me luck. We will. We'll, we'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> See you Good later. Luck. Bye. Armit didn't get the part in Mamma Mia, but he is looking forward to appearing in a production with Aishin's Theatre Company in four months' time. And with what he's learned over the past month, he's feeling positive about the future. Didn't think that I would learn from it, but I so have. I really have, I've been given loads of tips by Jay. Benjamin has helped loads of kind of emotional things as well. And just loads of, you know, money. I just look at money in a really different way than I ever used to see it really. And I think that um, I'm really hoping that I'm really gonna take it with me now in, in the many years of my life.